You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. LSU beat Florida Saturday night in Tiger Stadium 52-35, to but that hardly tells the story because so much of the focus, of course, is on the efforts of one man, that being Jaden Daniels. But take a second to let sink in what I just said. LSU beat Florida 52-35. to LSU hung half a hundred on the Gators. A team that so thoroughly dominated this series throughout the 90s, where Steve Spurrier basically was running up the score every year in LSU because he could. A series that brought us some of the greatest games we've ever seen. 1997, the night the goalpost fell, of course, the first ever win over a number one team in the country. 2007, arguably the greatest game ever played in Tiger Stadium. We've seen wild finishes. Of course, the flip in the swamp in 2010, the kick in the fog in 2020, you know the list. And LSU beat the Gators 52 to 35. And that's barely even the story. That is how sensational Jaden Daniels' night Saturday was. You know, I've often described elite athletes this way. You are elite when you make the extraordinary seem commonplace. When every time you go out onto the field, we expect something spectacular. That was Joe Burrow in 2019. That was Leonard Fournette in 2015, a season that is largely lost in our memories because of how it finished. But if you actually remember what Fournette did in those first two months of the season, it was otherworldly. Tyron Matthew in 2011, same thing. Jaden Daniels is doing that now. Yo, Jaden Daniels put up an SEC record. 606 yards against Florida. SEC record. They've been playing football in this conference for almost 100 years now. And nobody has put up more yards in a single game than Jaden Daniels did Saturday against Florida. They've been playing college football for a really long time. No player in the history of the FBS has thrown for 350 yards and run for 200 yards in the same game until Saturday night when Jaden Daniels did it against Florida. It is absolutely stunning what we are watching right now with Jaden Daniels. And this isn't like it's just some LSU-centric bias. Chris Felica, a.k.a. The Bear, formerly of College Game Day, now on Fox Sports, tweeted, Jaden Daniels only leads the nation in total offense by 57 yards per game at 408.2, which is more than 80 teams average this season. He's accounted for 38 touchdowns, which is more than 81 teams have scored all year. He writes, I mean, what are we doing if he doesn't win the Heisman? We could go on and on and on with the number of tweets, and cosigns from all over the college football world. Dane Brugler is an NFL draft analyst over at The Athletic. He tweeted a list, the most plays of 20 or more yards in 2023. Jaden Daniels leading the country with 76 
He, he notes parenthetically, this guy is ridiculous. And then the way he wrote the tweet was like 75, 74, 70, the number of 20 plus yard plays, 73, 72. And you got to go all the way down to 57 before you get to Michael Penix. And then Caleb Williams at 55, and that's your list. Jaden Daniels is so far and away the best player in college football this season that it's not even really debatable. And it appears that everyone who follows college football and loves it knows it. And boy, was it on display Saturday night. You know, the game itself, LSU did a lot right in this game in the context of this season. Your defense got four stops in the first half. Throw a ticker tape parade for that one. You know, you lost the toss and got the ball first. So the way we've talked about this so much is you want to avoid your opponent getting the back-to-back scores at the end of the first half, start of the second. LSU got a touchdown on its opening drive, and it got stops at the end of the first half and the start of the second. It allowed you to build a lead. Despite getting four stops in the first half, you still only led 17-13 at half. You know how many stops you got in the second half? Four. And you outscored them 35-21. As a matter of fact, after the Caleb Jackson fumble on the kickoff and allowed Florida to get back-to-back touchdowns and take a a lead in the third quarter, 28-24, four plays later, Jaden Daniels, 51 yards, whoop, touchdown. You're back in front. You get a three-and-out score again. From the time Florida took the lead, 28-24, you outscored them 28-7 to seven in the second half. It was awesome. We can talk about some of the things in the game. You know, your second drive, you got down to the one-yard line. You gave Josh Williams the ball three straight plays from the one. He couldn't get in. Saw that against Florida State as well. It's evidence of where you miss a guy like Logan Diggs. After Josh Williams on second down didn't get in, probably would have run Caleb Williams out there to say, hey, let me get my big physical running back an opportunity to get me a yard all's well that ends well I get it obviously Caleb Jackson fumbling the kickoff was a big bugaboo and I've been asked all season hey man why does LSU fair catch every kickoff that's why your offense put up 700 yards sometimes the only thing that's going to stop your offense is you fumbling a kickoff so just take it at the 25 and go 75 yards in five plays (laughs) I mean, what's an extra five, seven yards of offense? It just doesn't matter. A field position, it doesn't matter. There was more controversy surrounding targeting as we all saw Andre Sam get ejected. Spoke my piece on this last week. I think the spirit of the targeting rule is right. We should all be want to eliminate dangerous plays from football. But if an alien from outer space landed in America landed in Baton Rouge on Saturday night, and this alien had never seen a game of football, and you showed this alien side-by-side videos of Dallas Turner's hit and Andre Sam's hit, and you said one of these players was thrown out of the game because their hit was too dangerous, even aliens from outer space are pointing to the Dallas Turner hit. It's nonsensical. We have completely lost our way with targeting. It's stupid. Brian Kelly called it tragic. But really, we just lost common sense with the penalty. And maybe someone like Brian Kelly yelling loudly enough about it will fix it. It was very unfortunate for Andre Sam on Saturday to be ejected from that game when that kid's only got a couple more opportunities to play college football. Hopefully, more insanity like that will point to the necessity of altering that rule. I'm not confident because we've seen it for 10 years now. But maybe we're trending in that direction. All things considered, y'all. We know where LSU is. You got two weeks left. You're not playing for a title, but you will be trying to finish off one of the best offensive seasons in the history of college football, which is a mouthful. Jaden Daniels is trying to become LSU's second quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy and doing so in a four year span, which is stunning considering this place was a quarterback graveyard for a decade under Les Miles. And now you're building that reputation as a great offensive school. We all wish the defense was better. If the defense was better, LSU would be playing for a national championship. We all know it. They're not. It's what it is. So make of this season down the stretch what you can. Hope Jaden Daniels goes and stat compiles over the next two weeks. 
Hopefully Michael Penix and Bo Nix pee down their legs somewhere along the way. And Jaden wins the Heisman because he certainly deserves it. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.